What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now, and today we're coming to you from Southern Arizona, starting out here in Ajo. We're headed to Y next, and we're gonna go all across Southern Arizona, so let's do it. Yeah, we went down to Southern Arizona during wildflower season. This is late March, early April time frame when you can see all these beautiful wildflowers. They're yellow, purple, they're all along the side of the road out here in Southern Arizona. We're actually gonna head over to Tombstone and Bisbee, as well as Tubac. So you're gonna get a lot of Southern Arizona in this video, and I really love Southern Arizona, let me tell you that. And once you get past Gila Bend, you start to come across these border patrol checkpoints, so get used to that. Going south, you're not gonna get hit by the border patrol checkpoints, but coming back up north, you may get stopped, so keep that in mind if you plan on looking a little bit suspicious. I don't know what you would be doing that would be suspicious, but they will stop you if they think you're up to something. And here we are pulling up to Ajo. This is an old mining boom town. They have a big mine right next to the town here. Don't expect too much from Ajo, but it does remind me of northern Mexico, being that it's the biggest small town right before you actually get to Lukeville, which is the border town with Mexico. So from Ajo, I would say you're about 35 to 40 minutes away from the border. It is an interesting little town. As you can see, they've got a visitor center here. And right in the town center, you will see that they do some festival kind of events right here. Really a nice small town right here in the Sonoran Desert. And from Ajo, we decided to head a bit further south towards Y. And then once you go past Y, in between the border crossing and the town, you will actually come to a very unique cactus park. This one's called Oregon Pipe. And these cactuses kind of look like saguaros, but they're skinnier and they produce more arms and you can see right here that sign says 30 miles to mexico 92 miles to rocky point that's the big ticket in town that puerto Pinasco, which is rocky point also you'll see oregon pipe cactus national monument 22 miles and that's where we're actually headed next from Y, you're basically headed towards mexico but if you wanted to head east a bit you'd head towards tucson crossing through the tohono o'odham Native American Reservation, which we're actually gonna do right after we check out the National Monument. But you can see, look how beautiful the drive is this time of year down towards the Oregon Pipe National Monument and towards Mexico. All right, here we are at Oregon Pipe National Monument. We're gonna walk around here and see what's going on with these unique cactuses. One of the things I enjoy doing when I go to these national parks is getting a stamp in my National Parks Passport book here, and that's what I'm doing right here. If you're into cacti, you're gonna see a variety of different cactus here. Ocotillo, the organ pipe, you're gonna see staghorns, and some unique other bushes that are unique to the Sonoran Desert. And because we're in that part of the world where we're right along the border, they do have signs saying, watch out for uh, coyote activity or human trafficking around this area. We're literally five miles from the border. So here we are walking a trail out here. We have a Mexican jumping bee. These were actually used as poison on the tips of darts that the Tohono O'odham people were using to actually kill fish and other rodents. But that's a Mexican jumping bee right here in the Oregon Pipe National Park. If you look right over here, there's a bunch of organ pipes. You can see by the sign here, it says tea time. White Ratani is this plant right here. They said that old pioneers in the Tohono O'odham people actually used to make tea to treat sore throat and cough. So there's the actual tea, and they say you can actually chew on the root. So here we are in front of an Ocotillo tree. So aside from being in your front yard as decoration and ornamentation, the indigenous people actually used to use it for fences. So they would cut it right down here and then they would stick it in the ground. And it could actually take root and start growing again, but it would be a good fence around their house, their Pueblo, whatever they have. And so this is an Ocotillo, you'll see them all around here. We'll do a little trivia for those of you in the audience. Anyone wanna tell us what kind of plant this is? Now, it looks like a cross between a Palo Verde tree and an Ocotillo. If they both intermingled, that's what it would produce. 
You can come down to this national park here and do camping in a tent, or you can actually bring your motor home. They have a variety of different campgrounds here, and it's big sky country at night. You're going to see a lot of stars. That's what's nice about it. I would say in the summertime, it's going to be really hot in the daytime, beautiful at night. In the wintertime, it's going to be really cold at night and pleasant in the daytime. So there is a diversity in climate right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cross the Indian Reservation here and head over towards Tubac, which is our next stop, and we're going to get some food. We had planned to go up to Kitt Peak here where the observatory is, but the road was closed. Now this area where we're headed in Tubac, there's going to be small towns around here like Sao Rita, Green Valley, and we're going to go up to Madera Canyon a little later in the film, but this area we're going to is popular with retirees. So lots of golf activity down here. Even though it's a retirement community as a 40 year old, I would love to live in this area. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, so we're here at Longhorns at Amato, Arizona. That's where we're located. Nine miles away from Tubac, where we're getting an Airbnb. Yeah, this place Longhorns had some darn good steak. I'd recommend stopping there if you're into steak or any sort of country cooking. They had chicken fried steak and some fish. Really good food here. And now we have arrived in Tubac, so we're gonna show you around. What we decided to do once we got there was put our bags in the Airbnb and then head down to do some hiking. So that's actually what we're gonna do right down there by the water. That's actually called the Day On's a Trail, which we're gonna show you here. But first, let's show you around the Airbnb. Now, Airbnb prices have gone way up from where they used to be, but they do make sense if you're with a bunch of people, really of the amount of bedrooms. So we finally made it to two back. We're going down to the water before it gets dark, but uh, we'll probably be doing some night hiking right now. So the big trail down here is called the Day Onza Trail. It connects from Mexico all the way through Arizona at Gila Bend. It starts to go towards California and becomes Camino Real. You can see right here, we're on the Onza Trail. I hear an owl, yeah, there's a bat right there, really interesting, you hear him? It's an owl. And you can see right here, this is an important bird area, it's actually globally recognized as one of the best conservation areas in the world, right here in Tubac. This mountain right here, Mount Wrightson, and they have Madera Canyon nearby, if we go to the other side, that's Patagonia. We go south about 20 minutes. We're in Mexico, in Nogales. So the name is Juan Bautista de Anza. Goes from Nogales to California. Yeah, so we've decided to come out here at night and walk around Tubac. You can see St. Anne's Church right behind me. This is actually old Tubac. Now we're in the town. By the way, if you guys want, we're going to make a small towns of Southern Arizona exclusive video. So we're going to show you all the small towns around this area in Southern Arizona. So if you guys want that, drop a comment below asking us to produce it and we will. By the way, do not come to Tubac expecting any form of nightlife. There is basically nothing going on at night. In the daytime, it's really nice to walk around and do some art shopping. It is a nice town, by the way. I'm not saying it's not. It's just don't come down here expecting a party because you're not going to get that here. It's beautiful weather, as you can see. I mean, it was it was probably 67 degrees around 9 o'clock in the morning. Just perfect walking around here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head over towards Madera Canyon, and then we're going to cross over towards Tombstone and Bisbee, so do stick around for that. But first up, let's go through this. Border Patrol checkpoint, and then on to Madera Canyon. Let's see what kind of wildlife's up there. Yeah, so we're up here on Madera Canyon. We're gonna walk around this natural area. They've got ringtail cats, turkeys, lots of hawks. Let's go see what's out here. Now on this trip, we did see a possum. We saw turkeys, we saw deer, and many different birds, including hawks. 
The only thing is, we didn't, all, we weren't always quick to get the camera out. And as we continue to show you around Southern Arizona here, if you guys are new to this channel, you can consider subscribing and liking the video. That helps us a lot because then we produce more cool videos like this. Also, I want to thank the people who have signed up as channel members who are supporting this channel. As a member, you're more likely to get your comments replied to and stand out with questions. So that's a perk of being a member. But just look how beautiful it is out here. Now, if this doesn't make you want to go out there and explore Arizona, I don't know what will. But anyway, now we're on a dirt road here. We're actually crossing over towards Sonoida, which will eventually take us to Patagonia, and then on our way towards Tombstone. This was a bit of a off-road trek, I would say. down here in Patagonia you can stay at the stage stop in right here right there they also have the wild horse restaurant and saloon Patagonia is basically on the other side of Mount Wrightson from Green Valley and Tubac there's also a lake over here I definitely like going to Patagonia but there's not too much to do out here aside from explore the nature well, we came up here to the Patagonia Museum, but it's closed. It's only open Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. At least that's what the sign says. Well, we breezed right through Southern Arizona wine country out in Sonoida. We didn't quite stop this time, but we're in Tombstone. So now the fun begins if you're into the old Wild West. And here we are at Boot Hill Graveyard. Now remember, Tombstone was a major silver mining boom town. They found lots of precious metal out here and during its heyday, this was the place to be. They had all sorts of different prestigious lodges here, the Freemasons and many other groups. Tombstone really is a town that's stuck in the past. So if you've never actually been down here, we're gonna do a tour real quick, show you what it looks like down here, show you all the unique stores and saloons. And then what we'll do is head over to Bisbee, which you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for that. But let's just do this tour here of Tombstone show you what's going on down here. Down in Tombstone, some of the things you'll look forward to doing, checking out one of the gunslinger fights down there at the OK Corral. They also have the popular place that you saw in the movie. They have the Bird Cage, Big Nose Kate Saloon. Definitely check that place out. Just at least stop in there and take a look. And then you also have the world's largest rose bush. But now we're on our way to Bisbee. Over there on my other channel, Island Hopper TV, for those of you who have subscribed, you may have seen our video about the top 12 small towns in America. Bisbee actually made the list for that one. Alright guys, here we are at Bisbee, the old Phelps Dodge mining town. Back in the early 1900s, Phelps Dodge was building a major operation out of here, pulling copper and other precious metals out of the ground here. They have the Copper Queen mine, you can do a tour there. But what we're going to end up doing is just walking up Main Street here, going up the thousand stairs to the top of the hill, and then coming back down, we're also going to get some food. Now I just want to remind you guys, when you guys go to a small town, don't expect much. The reason people like small towns is because it's not overly congested and there isn't this hustle and bustle lifestyle. That's what makes small towns popular. So if you're one of those types of people who loves the energy of a big city, then maybe small towns aren't for you. Right here they got the Bisbee 1000 stairs you can hike up right here. Look at that. It's a cool walk through the town, but more than anything, it's a heck of a workout. Yeah, so we made it up those thousand steps. I am feeling winded, but you can see there's this alleyway 
Right here, when you get to the top, you just walk back down to the city center. If you're looking for a place to stay while down here, you can go to bisbeegateways.com right here. This is Casa Antigua. All right, guys. Well, we've just now shown you around this part of Southern Arizona. This was a two-day journey. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, watch some more of our other videos. We will be putting a link to our most recent small towns video. And if you guys do want us to make that the top small towns in Southern Arizona exclusively, let us know in the comments. See you on the next one. And you can click on one of the small town videos right here.